Our first step in setting up your development environment on a Mac is to download and install the Eclipse IDE. Now Eclipse is free and it's open source and it's managed by the Eclipse Foundation. And it was actually started and managed by IBM, uh, but it's still a very open community. So we can download it for free from eclipse.org. And once you're here, you wanna look for the icon where it says, get started now to download Eclipse. And on the downloads page, this will show you according to what the current operating system is that you are accessing the page from. So since I'm on a Mac, it's showing me all the Mac packages. And there's a lot of different flavors. And what we're looking for is the Classic. So I'm going to choose Eclipse Classic, and I'm going to download the version for my particular operating system. And then it's going to take me to uh, Mirror Downloads, and I'm just going to choose uh, from the top one here. It's about 175 megabytes, so it might take you a few minutes to download. Okay, once it's downloaded, it'll be in your Downloads folder. And you can see that I have a zip file. I'm just going to put it out here on my desktop. And I'm going to double click on it to unzip it. And then I have this folder. Now when we open this folder, it has a series of files and other folders inside of it. It doesn't do an installation in the traditional sense that you have with your other applications. So what you want to do is take this whole folder and put it into your Applications folder. So from here I'm just going to take my Eclipse folder and I'm just going to drag it into the Applications folder here. So now when I come in there should be a folder here for Eclipse. and my Eclipse app is in here. Now I can double click on this to start it. And Indigo is the most recent release, so uh, if you're watching this later in time, this may change depending on the new updates. And the workspace, it's asking you to define where you want to keep your projects that you're creating while working in Eclipse. So this is a default place to save your projects. So I'm going to keep this set up and I'm going to choose use this as the default and do not ask again because otherwise every time you start Eclipse it's going to ask you about this. When you do create your projects you can put them in different places so you can override this workspace when you create a new project but this is just asking you to set up a default location. So I'm going to click OK. And this is the opening screen for Eclipse. And what you're looking for is uh, starting with the workbench. And this will be the environment that we will be working in uh, in developing your Android apps for pretty much the rest of the semester. Um, so in the meantime, we still have some more things to set up, so we'll move on to the next point. Uh, before we move on, one thing that you may want to do is, while Eclipse is open uh, on your dock, since it's something that you're going to be using a lot this semester, uh, I'm just going to uh, click on it, alt-click or right-click on it if you have a mouse with a right-click button. I'm going to choose to keep it in the dock so that I can get back to it pretty quickly. So it will be there even when I exit out of Eclipse. And once you have Eclipse open, we can go to Help and Install New Software. And then in here we're going to put in a specific URL. And this is https colon slash slash dl dash ssl dot google dot com slash android 
slash Eclipse. And then we're going to click Add. And we're going to name this repository Android. And then we'll click OK. And then it shows us uh, some developer tools. And you can expand this to see what it's going to install. So I'm just going to check this to check them all. And then we'll click Next. And it's just asking us to confirm. And I'm going to click Next. I'm going to accept the terms and license agreements and finish. And it'll take a minute or two to install the software. If you get a security warning, we can click OK. It is a trusted source. And it says that um, we need to restart Eclipse for the installation changes to take effect. And it says you can go ahead, but you're on your own. Don't blame us if you've got problems. So uh, I'm just going to hit restart now. So this is going to restart Eclipse, not the entire computer. So it will restart Eclipse. And then we still have a little bit of configuration to do with uh, finding the Android development tools. So when it pops back up here, uh, this is where it's saying it's install new SDK. It knows that we're working with Android. And it tells us we need to, we need to use the Android SDK. So it has installed the latest available version of Android APR, APIs. Uh, and also a nice thing is install Android 2.1. They're telling you that this is supported by about 90% of the phones and tablets. So I'm going to go ahead and check that off because that's a big population and I don't want to lose that group when I'm starting to develop my apps. And it has the target location, Android SDKs. And click Next. And then you can decide whether you want to send Google your usage statistics. I'm just going to click No and Finish. And it's going to go through and install these, uh, the SDK and those other tools. And I'm going to choose Accept All these packages to install and you can see that it's going to do the tools and the platforms the most recent 4.0.3 and then the 2.1 which is the 97 percent of uh, the devices so this usually takes some time to download so we'll pause this and catch up when it's completed Okay, it's finished installing, and next thing we're going to do is we're going to check out what's happened here on our Eclipse. We have uh, some other tools that weren't there originally. We have uh, one that opens the Android SDK Manager, and one that opens the Android Virtual Device Manager. Now, the, the Android Virtual Device Manager we'll get into in a separate uh, movie. But for now, you can take a look at the Android SDK Manager. If we click on this, it's going to open up the Software Development Kit Manager, doing some updates for uh, some of the files already. And this shows you what's installed and what's not installed for the various operating systems. So we want the tools. Tools are going to be useful. And then these are the different flavors or versions of the mobile operating system. So 4.0.3, I'm going to check to download all those. Um, you can see where we installed Android. It was the other one. It was the 2.1. So it installed the SDK platform. Samples are good things to have. Uh, they're, they're example programs that you can use to go in and look at how they were set up. And then these are additional versions of the operating system.
so you don't have to go down and do a whole new installation through Eclipse. You can just grab the SDK that you want to work with and use. So I'm going to choose um, a couple of these. I'm going to do the Android 4 and I'm going to do 3. Actually I'm just going to choose them all. Get them all downloaded. Now this will take some time because there's some pretty big files to do all of these. But um, let's see what's under extras here if we want to grab those. Uh, yeah, going to go in and get everything. If you're short on disk space, you might be a little more picky. And some of the lab assignments that you're going to do this semester, I will give you specific uh, versions to work on so that uh, we're all working from the same operating system setup. So the Android SDK Manager is where you'll go in order to uh, add any of these other versions. So once I've picked and chosen these then I'll click install 43 packages and this will be ready to go. Uh, I'm going to back out of this now for just a second though. Um, come back in here and look at how Eclipse is set up. Once you have your development environment set up, you want to double check and make sure that you'll be able to create a new project. And in Eclipse you can go to File and New. And we can choose Project. And then you'd want to choose the type of project, which would be an Android project, and then click Next. But I just wanted to make you to check this to make sure that you can see this, to see that you have properly set up the development environment and that everything is there. Uh, there is a separate movie on the Hello World where you can create the new project and build your first Android project saying hello world from that. So from here I'm going to hit cancel. I'm going to go back out and download some of these additional SDKs into my system.